You know, there's data now showing that the vegetables grown in America from the 1940s to the 2010s, there's this 80% depletion in nutrients. And I think that's just big agriculture coming in and trying to improve the efficiency. I think originally it started with good intent. How do we increase production to feed a growing planet? But that efficiency comes with a cost. And I think the development of these genetically modified organisms, these seeds that, you know, that then they can spray with herbicides or pesticides to kill the weeds so there's less competition for resources, you know, that comes at an extreme cost to the end user. And I understand it, I think there's a balance, we can do better balancing. So I think what we're gonna have to do is go back kind of to the basics of using, you know, regenerative agriculture, uh, crop rotation, uh, let's fertilize and put nutrients in the soil, but we have to avoid the herbicides and, and pesticides. And I struggle with that too. And, you know, rotational grazing, I think has a lot of benefits to that. We put a lot of cattle on a small period in the, or a small acre uh, track of land. So they eat the grass, they process it, they poop, and then they step on it and they're basically fertilizing the soil. I think the biggest misconception in this is this whole field of organics. I mean, what is organic? I mean, the media has conditioned us to think, oh, well, you have to eat organic. So the misconception is, and we've done analysis on this, organically grown vegetables typically have less vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. If you're doing a soil sample and the soil is depleted of nitrogen, but yet, you know, in organics, you can add manure, you can add uh, compost matter, things like that, but there's no standardization. So, you know, that's nitrogen, that's potash, that's phosphorus, that's it's sulfur. Those are the basic micronutrients. But then the other thing is I graze this and then the animals are putting back in the soil what they've consumed in the form of their, their manure and then they walk on it, get it in the soil. So that's the regenerative agriculture that we like to practice. And you know the vegetables we grow are not considered organic because we fertilize the soil, but we certainly don't put any herbicides, pesticides, or, or chemicals on it. I encourage people to go to their local farmer's market, You know, get to know their local growers, ask them the questions, and then, you know, consumer demand drives a change in, in processes. So if you go to your local farmer's market and you, they're using, you know, genetically modified, and they're spraying their crops with Roundup, then don't buy from them, right? I mean, that, that pressure alone will force them to make changes. But, you know, you've got a lot of good local farmers, local farmer's markets that are providing really high quality food uh, with no chemicals added. I think the, big, the biggest challenge, I think, in the future is gonna be people who live in big cities that are dependent upon the local growers, even big agriculture, and then getting that to a retail outlet and a grocery store. But I think people need to learn, even people who live in big cities, grow your own food, be self-reliant. And you can do that. You know, we have, you know, probably a quarter acre garden, and that provides more vegetables, more food than we consume. So obviously we, we give it away. We don't sell it, give it away to friends and family. But to feed a family of four, you can probably plant a garden, uh, you know, within maybe 100 square feet, 200 square feet. So even if you're living in a big city, you have a backyard or patio, you know, you can have above ground beds. Uh, but just understand what it takes to grow your own food and to be self-reliant. Well, I'll tell you my, my greatest fear and concern is as a lot of people are moving out of other states and moving out of cities in Texas, you know, people are looking for so-called ranchettes, right? Or, you know, five, 10, 15 acre ranchettes. And so my concern is that, you know, these developers coming in, buy these big tracts of land, subdivide them up, and then I'm surrounded by, you know, 50,000, 100,000 people out here. Where now, the beauty of this is the peace, the serenity. My overall goal is to continue to acquire land. That way I can maintain this peace and tranquility and prevent developers coming in and uh, really developing a, a small community or even a small city out here. It probably won't happen in, in my lifetime, but certainly probably in my kids' lifetime. And, you know, I think the older they're getting now, they're 16 and, and, and 13, and they're starting to understand and appreciate, you know, how hallowed this ground is and what it means to, to carry on the legacy.